three, two, one. Recording started. Thank you, Peter. This Thank is Ray Welty. Well, welcome to the uh, Lower Southampton Township Board of Supervisors public work session for May 26, 2021. It's 6.30 p.m. This meeting is being held virtually as so advertised. Um, all five supervisors are present along with uh, members of the administrative team. I'll turn it over right now to Joe Gallo. Joe, if you want to start with what you'd like to cover. Sure. Thank you, Board Chair. Um, just going through real quickly for tonight's agenda, um, under agenda item number one, just the letter D, the ratification approval of accounts payable. Again, that is for uh, the police uh, uniform allowance. So that's all that is for that particular issue. Just a reminder, um, as far as item number two, um, that's a discussion and plan for the old district court building, basically the naming and the potential functions um typical functions that we would have that we would be uh, trying out is basically small recreational programs auxiliary uh, board meetings temporary or short-term electronic or warming rooms during short-term power outages uh, red cross blood drives and also maybe a potential office for the tax collector if that white building at the end of the block would end up being demolished because it's getting a little bit of um uh, ratty sort of, sort of speak so it's getting a little run down over there so that but that's for another potential day just an fyi uh as far as item the next item up was item three and that's dealing with t-mobile's late uh, lease with it's the county cell tower located at 1500 desire at our building here at the admin building uh currently we're getting a yearly three percent increase under this new agreement, uh, I believe uh, it goes up to a 4% increase. So basically the estimated commencement date would go into effect 8-1-21 once they're done their construction for T-Mobile, um, running to 1-1-30 and over the course of that contract, that would give us basically a little bit over $100,000, $100,273.52 over the accumulation of years. Uh, so for this for this uh, agenda item, I would hope that the board would ap approve that. Again, th what T-Mobile has provided us is a permit application, the construction uh, drawings and structural analysis report was filed with zoning services for review. And uh, Mike could touch on that a little bit if, if need be. Um, the lease agreement initially started on 6-2-1999. The first restatement was 6-3 in 2015 this would be the second amendment this would be the second amendment to that document so i would look for an approval for from the board for that okay as far as the manager's report okay in here again uh, jp mascaro the solicitor letter went out they did receive it uh, jp mascaro did uh, quantify that they are in receipt of our letter as well as upper south um, they have not received northamptons to my knowledge yet uh, as far as the refuse and recycling and yard waste, where we're going to ask if we're going to be going into the penal penalty features of the contract, I would probably ask that uh, on the designated date, I believe it's commencing June 1st, that uh, the residents send an email into the administration under administration at lstwp.org, where they would list their name, address, as well as send any pictures uh, pictures are, will help express what's going on out there and will make it easier to quantify uh, to Mascaro that, you know, they've been deficient. They have eight hours to remedy the situation. And if it's not remedied, then we'll implement the penalty aspects. Um, the Red, we will also have a Red Cross drive and that the proposed Sarah Mitchell, I believe, uh, if you want to call it the Civic Building, I just threw that out there, uh, on June 25th, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., uh, the sanitation rebates uh, basically running from February 8th to July 31st. Right now, 926 rebates are issued. Township building um, will be opening up to the public on June 7th. We're re still requesting that masks be worn inside the building, conducting business, especially in the foyer area, and that masks and distancing still be appropriate for meetings. Uh, additionally, there in the manager's report, report, we're going to be asking on behalf for the police. They had a time constraint 
they were trying to procure a particular vehicle from one vendor that they have been unable to do that. So they want to go to a second vendor, uh, but it's more of a time is of the essence type situation. So their time constraints there, they're looking for approval from the board tonight for an issue to payment to a co-star vendor by the name of Whitmoyer Ford for a 2021 transit with 150 cargo van in the amount of $26,600. This is part of the RDA grant. Um, a check would be supplied to the police department for the vendor on Thursday. So we would need approval for that tonight. Uh, consideration also for approval, and this again is the Sarah Mitchell Civic Building, uh, would be for the siding, the soffit, gutters, and downspout work over there. We got three quotes, tilt-in windows at 14.8, CNC family roofing at 19.750, Mid-Atlantic at 27300 So we would look for an, uh, an award to tilt-in windows on that one. Um, let me see anything else on that part. Okay. As far as I did the PowerPoint, now just sort of a brief staffing overview uh, for the police department. Um, there was a request by them and them being shorthanded. Uh, the, a recall letter did go out and the person is allegedly supposed to be coming back on 6-1. So that, that would uh, alleviate the chief's uh, issue from 6-1 to 9-30 um, on a temporary basis. Recreation, uh, camp, the camp and pool staffing, hiring is still going on. Lisa and, and Walt are doing that. And, and basically we, we almost have a full complement there right now. Uh, the fire marshal's office, uh, they'll have an individual be coming back probably in mid June uh, to alleviate and help them with their, um, with their invoicing. As far as public works, all recall letters have been issued and sent out, one person back. Right now, they're looking at two potential grass cutter types that would be coming back or that would be hired. Um, Mark would be looking for three more on that to assist with the grass cutting aspects now that the, the recreation department is open. Um, as far as finance and zoning, we're doing more with less as usual and we're trudging along and, and, and basically uh, working extremely hard in those two departments also. As far as uh, just an FYI, we're going to be uh, basically, or I would be receiving a letter in the very near future. Uh, we have a CBA coming due that is for the police department as of 1231, their contract ends. So I'll be looking to the board for inputs, basically once it needs uh, that they would like from this uh, reflective uh, contract that's coming up in addition to the chief's request. Uh, let me see if I missed anything. Oh, uh, there was also I'm, I'm getting some phone calls on the tra on a traffic signal issue. Uh, this may be more of an armor or maybe a Joe Fiaco issue. Uh, supposedly, uh, there's a traffic signal issue with regard to uh, excuse me uh, while turning uh, on westbound onto Street Road from the north side of Bustleton. Traffic is continuing to come from people coming off from the southbound. Basically, you have two green lights going off simultaneously. So um, we may want to get this checked out. Uh, one lady re referenced that she almost saw three accidents occur. So I would probably send this to probably for armor to check the timing and to see if there's anything wrong with that particular issue. Um, but from what I'm hearing, this has been in play. This has been for a long time coming. So we got some complaints there and we'll check that out. Uh, I, I think that covered everything other than the first payment for American pool went out. That was $19,018.96. That did go out. The traffic ordinance for Eastview was advertised today and possibly could be placed on the agenda for 6-9 if okay with Chief Krimmel. And I, I think I touched base on everything that I, that I had to speak on. Anything, uh, any questions from the board? I have a question. Go ahead, yeah. Deb. Um, we have um, seasonal grass cutters coming um, in for the, um, public works. Is there, you said someone's coming back. Is that person coming back as a public works employee that does part of the six people that, I think it was six people that wait, were laid off. Was that one of, was that who you're referring to? There was one person that did come back at it, out, of the, out of the six. Um, and then the, the rest right now we're trying to fill with the grass crutter types that is, but also that could be uh, groomed 
uh, to a future date uh, if Mike likes individuals because five of the other individuals did not come back. They, they found other jobs. So that, that's also part of it too. So this is more of a, a test um, to test certain individuals, these grass cutters. If we could get five individuals, Mike could possibly hire, I mean, Mark would be able to hire possibly two or three to supplement his, his crew. And that person that came back, is, is there um, an end date to that or not? That, there that would, the, the right now, since uh, all the recall letters, we've been putting a tentative thing or a project basis um, due to the fact that we don't know the revenues that are going to be coming in due to COVID and again being one year behind uh, that uh, right now that person would po possibly that one existing one is till the end of October uh, to, to the best of my knowledge of my recollection. Okay, thank you. Joe, yeah? I have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, just if you give us all a little bit of an update on uh, opening up the township building. I know we spoke about it last time and we had kind of kicked around possibly the beginning of this upcoming month yep. to uh, let the residents back in. And we also talked about, you know, the uh, board meetings again. I don't know if you have any kind of update for us all. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I thought I said that, but uh, hold on one second. That that basically is scheduled for June, June 7th, Kim. Um, yeah. And basically we're requesting that may still be worn inside the building if you're conducting business. It would be in that foyer area. Um, basically not having residents walk around as they used to do back. Everybody would walk into zoning or walk back into recreation. We would still continue with the model being in the foyer area, but you still could come in and you could also still access the, uh, the outside deposit box and drop things off the, like people had been in the past where they could you go right on the internet and, and schedule meetings that way too. So that's still an option for, for the residents out there. But that would be for June 7th, and it would be applicable for the June 9th meeting. Now, the June 9th meeting, again, we would still be asking for masks and some social distancing to be in place. Okay. Uh, well, you know, last time we had spoken about it, I think we had said that, you know, with with us guys and, and you and the other administration, I mean, what we were only going to be able to have maybe, I don't know, a half dozen or a dozen people out in the crowd. Um, that's if we have to keep the six foot rule in place. I mean, and, and if, that, okay. if that is not, you know, you know, if that falls by the wayside and, you know, we'd have to check what the county regulations are on that, or if they're, they're, they don't exist anymore, come of a certain date, then we'll, we'll apply it then. Okay. All right. And then, um, once again, uh, June 9th, I believe you had said was our next meeting. So the, yes, that should be, a, that should be a live one then. Yes, sir. Terrific. All right. Very good. Thank you, Joe. No problem, sir. Uh, so, I want to, if I could have a, a minute or two, Joe, about item number two. Yes, sir. Okay, thanks. Um, I want to let the board know so uh, you have an idea what's coming when item number two comes up. I also invited um, John Grin, who's the chairman of the Veterans Advisory Council, to sit in on that. So John will be in with us in this Microsoft Teams meeting. And uh, what I plan to do is back in June of 2019, um, I brought up about renaming when the district court renovations were finished, renaming that building in some way after Sarah Mitchell and the sacrifice that she made um, as a member of the Navy back on July 8, 2018. I didn't hear any opposition at that time. And uh, um, so 25 months has gone by. And in the past 25 months, the renovations are progressing nicely. I think now they need a new HVAC system from what I read. Um, but other than that, it seems like it's in pretty good shape. Uh, I also spoke to, you know, the VAC and asked them, would they be interested in maybe donating a plaque that could be placed on the building in honor of Sarah Mitchell and the VAC is fully in support of that. Um, so they're going to uh, fund that plaque out of the VAC's um, treasury. And then I also wanted to make sure that Mr. and Mrs. Mitchell were okay with this. So in April, um, I met with them for a few hours and they're thrilled with the idea. So what I'm gonna ask the board to do, um, after I give a synopsis for the public, um, I'd like to make a motion to ask the board to approve naming that building the Mitchell Community Center. And then John Grin's gonna show you a proposal of the plaque that we're tentatively thinking of getting and putting up 
there. And then maybe having a formal dedication of the building when it's ready, whether it's June or whatever. So that's kind of a snapshot of what's coming up with item two. Ray, that all sounds terrific. Would would you think though it should be the Sarah Mitchell Community Center or just the Mitchell Community Center? And that's think, you know what I I like Sarah Mitchell Community yeah. Center myself because yeah. it's being named after her. Exactly, and that's it's what more I was personal. Thinking. It's more personal. You know, I, I was so. even I was even thinking the Sarah Sarah Mitchell Memorial Center, but either either way, but I definitely think Sarah's first name should be uh, should be in there. I do too, and I thought we thought maybe a community center because the community will be gathering there, like Joe said, for Red Cross blood drive, zoning hearing board meetings, LSAA meetings, BAC meetings, and maybe I think Walter talked about having some maybe some winter programs in there for the uh, for the recreation parks and recreation. So it seems like a really, you know, a, a fully inclusive community center, and I'd like to attach Sarah Mitchell's name to that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So that's what I'm going to bring up. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, when you first brought it up, I think you had just said the Mitchell Memorial Center or Community Center. Well, that, so definitely that Sarah's may, first name. Yeah, that may be what's on a plaque. Um, there's been a couple different plaques that floated around. One said Mitchell Community Center. The other said Sarah. But I think in the end, we're going to ask the name of the Sarah Mitchell Community Center. Yes, yes, yeah, absolutely. All right, very good, yeah, very good. So that's what's, that's what's common with item two. Thank you. Joe? Okay. Anymore. Sue, did you have a question? Or? I did. So for Parks and Rec, was is there someone that was called back for Parks and Rec then? For, par for Parks and Rec right now, what they're doing is is all his staff that he needs to run the pool, the pool and uh, the programmatic stuff right now. There is the job posting for the for the one individual to support Walt. Um, I don't know if that has taken place yet, but uh, Walt may be able to touch base on that. Um, as we go round robin, I'll have every director go through anyway. So okay, we, can, thank you. we can touch base on that. Walt, did you want to go first then anyway? Because you, you had a fair amount of stuff. Sure, whatever works. All right. Okay, so um, summer camp, the registrations are going pretty good. We have 135 kids out of the 175 that we're expecting this summer already signed up. Um, registrations are rolling in. So we had our first parent meeting uh, Monday night at 6 at the Dolphin. We had a good turnout. Our next one's going to be next Thursday, June 3rd at 6 o'clock at the Dolphin. So if anybody wants to come out and um, meet me and the staff and uh, ask questions, that'd be great if you guys could come out to that. Um, so June 6th, Walt? Thursday, June 3rd. June 3rd, okay. June 3rd at 6 o'clock at the Dolphin. Um, and then camp is going along. I got almost all the trips booked and the guests and that kind of stuff um, finalized, almost uh, ready to go. Um, as far as the dolphin is concerned, uh, we are working on the staff. We're doing pretty good with that. I have an estimate from Aqua about draining it and doing the repairs that are required. I'm trying to get one or two more estimates in here just to make sure we get a good price. Um, a lot of companies are are booked right now it's getting late in the season so they're going to come out early next week i have one one group coming out um tuesday or wednesday to give me an estimate so hopefully i can get us a, a, the best price from that and then i was wondering if i can't get anybody else to come out fast up for the next meeting could i possibly send an email uh to the board just to get like uh, your input or like a pre-approval um to go with aqua so we can get started so we hit our dates for for opening um, can't be pre-approval, but it could be if there's any comments or concerns, but um, that's fine. I guess it, it, what Walt would like to do is just to be a little bit flexible on that issue. If, cause since time would be of the essence, uh, you know, normally we like to get multiple quotes when we're dealing with vendors. Uh, in this case in point, we may be a little bit uh, with our backs to the wall on that particular issue, but we're certainly going to try to get a second or a third uh, price quote on there. But just in case if we don't, we just wanted to make sure the board is informed and, and knows that, you know, we, we may be making a, a decision on that particular issue. And all everything is below the pre-bid levels. Right. So, but that's just one thing. Walt also had um, a couple of requests, I guess, dealing with um, permit-wise. So, Walt could talk on that. Yeah. So, I did have one permit come in 
for a fundraiser at PlayWiki for the girls uh, in the car crash. And um, they're asking to do a charity walk and uh, raffle kind of stuff on a Saturday or a Sunday morning, July or August. So I told them I'd bring it up tonight and, and see what you guys thought, what the board thought about that. Um, they've got a ton of work behind it. They're ready to go. And it seems like a good idea to me. Um, just had to make sure we got approval, I guess, or that would work. We we would need, of course, uh, and since it's over a Saturday or a Sunday point point of, or period of time. Um, I don't know if we would have any police overtime with regard to that. I wouldn't think so. Uh, but for the most part, we would probably have to have some public works guys out there to possibly assist with this, with parking or anything like that. If they're going to be doing some sort of, uh, you know, four or five k walk um for for duration of time and possibly that uh, the insurance question uh typically we have a, an outside vendor you know um, indemnify the township in the, in this case you know does the board want to do that or do we want to cover it with our blanket you know that's a that's a board decision and that's the one thing i didn't mention to her when she sent the permit in uh about the insurance we have to get that worked out where were they thinking about doing this walk? Um, she wanted to do it at the farm at Play Wiki, since okay. that's um, apparently where everything was. Okay. And um, that's kind of her hope. And it doesn't. This doesn't involve anything inside the building. This is just purely outside the building. Yeah, just like uh, they asked, like a 5K kind of walk, charity walk, maybe um, some tables out with raffles or a, a couple food trucks, that kind of stuff. And this yeah. would. This would Joe. be. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Deb. No, this would be overtime for public works. Well, it's because it's on a weekend. It's a Saturday or Sunday, so. And that's. We we need two public works overtime for. Do we know how many hours or? Or could it, it be the people guys? It, it it all depends on you know we don't know the, the the amount of vehicles that would be coming through how many people that would join up for the walk so I, I would think at a minimum you would at least have two possibly maybe four four public works guys I'm I'm unsure on this aspect it all depends on who signs up for the walk um, you know and how many people basically how many people turn out and uh, you know it's better to be more prepared than less prepared so. I would say at a minimum two, possibly four, maybe six. I, I, I'm a little bit unsure on this. Joe, Joe, I have a question. question. Go ahead, Ray. I'm sorry to question Joe about the insurance rider. Um, if this if this is a charity event for the, these girls and and they're looking to make as much money as they can out of it, like a charity walk, uh, do you? I don't know. What does a a, a six hour one million dollar umbrella rider cost is that something that the township can absorb so that they don't have to absorb that cost and take away from you know how much money would come in or is that cost prohibitive i do not think it would be totally expensive it may cost anywhere from 400 to a thousand dollars i would suspect it may even be covered i would have to get the basically of how they how they want to do this basically the uh, more of a scope of what they intend to happen on that given day and to see if it would be covered by our own insurance. And if not, then it would have to be by the rider uh, and then we would have to pay, pay for that component of it. Okay. Just, just a thought, you know, they're out there to raise money. Walter, I have a question for you. Is this the, uh, the woman who I had gotten you in touch with? Yes. It is uh, terrific. Yes. Okay, so we've been working. We've been I've been in contact with her um, multiple times. Um, terrific. Try to work it out, and uh, the idea is to kind of have that her event or their event just to raise as much money as possible. And, right. Uh, I know. Uh, I know when I had spoken to her, she was thinking about possibly piggybacking off of one of the uh, one of the nights that we have the food trucks. Uh, but I guess she changed her mind, and now she's thinking more of a, more along the lines of a, of a walk. I guess. So that would be um, a fail, the fail-safe option. Okay. But I think um, ideally, if we could have a standalone event and kind of make okay. it special for this, those families, that would be the terrific. Great. Idea. Thank you with that, Walt. I know that was something that she was uh, she wanted to uh, you know get the okay on. So I think that's a terrific job. Thank you. Sure. 
And then the last so thing we, I had was so, um Well, one second. So I mean basically we, we would be looking for the board not maybe not at the, tonight's venue, but maybe at the next meeting to get kind of some tacit approvals uh to put that in, in motion kind of for Walt and for the group. So um you know, it, it doesn't, we're not looking for an answer right now, but at least so Walt can tell the lady that everything kind of looks well or looks good and that the township's willing to do certain aspects, um, you know, to assist. But uh, we would eventually need to quantify more of the scope, Walt. It might have to be fleshed out a little bit more on her part, on um, what she, you know, what she wants to do. Um, and then we could come to the board and basically give an estimation on how many public work guys it may it, they may need on that given night. Um, and then we could also find out the insurance component or I could find that out. Sorry, Walt. Great. Great. Yeah, so I can, I can reach out to her again and ask about the times and participants, et cetera, that kind of stuff. So we have all the details. And then the, the last thing I had was programming. Um, we're looking to start Zumba again up in um, early July. I got to talk, call the locations and make sure we can still go back in those places we used before, the firehouse and the church, I believe. And then as far as the the Mitchell or the community center next door, um, I would definitely like to do some programming, a lot of programming uh, in the fall with um, toddlers, you know, theft for toddlers in the morning, mommy and me kind of thing, um, family meetings and uh, have them like, workshops for things and then uh, one thing i really like to do is an esports program um the video games are a really popular um uh, activity right now it's a sport um and i think it'd be very popular with the kids so if that's something i could do in the building that, that'd be a big success well have you ever heard of those programs those uh it's like I don't know, it's throughout the united states it's some it's a music program for like young toddlers like 18 mm -hmm. months to yeah. Two years or something. I mm -hmm. forget what it's called. Um, but exactly that kind of stuff is what I'm thinking. Okay. I so went with, uh, one with my with my daughter in law, and she had like four sessions, like all morning, and there had to be twenty kids in each one. Yeah, those kind of things are perfect. And I'm thinking, like small, like young kids for music lessons or arts and crafts, or just kind of stuff that we have for when the older brothers and sisters are in school. We can mm -hmm. use that building and use that time to run programming. And then in the after school hours, we could do things like esports or any other kind of recreation activities that we can we can put in there. Hey, Walt, I got a, a crazy question for you. I take it you've been inside the old courthouse. Are you happy with the layout for these different types of uh, things that you have in your head? Is there any input, any anything that you would like to see? as they're redoing the inside or are you good with just the way it's going? Uh, I think it looks good for the small kind of programs. So if we're trying to do, you know, bigger physical activities, we'll have to find different locations. But um, for meetings, for the esports, for the toddler classes, I think it's it's perfect. OK, good. I just wanted to make sure, you, you know, yep. we have your approval with it. Yeah. So yeah, going back to the uh, that actual building, I mean, right now again, we're going to be changing out the, the basically the fa the facade aspect of the building. The mechanical still have to happen there, and that's something of a bid that we'll be taking before the board beforehand. So uh, that you know, it's taking a little bit of time to be drawn up bid perspective because it has to go to an engineering firm. So that that is a little bit of a delay there with that particular thing. Um, now, Mark, did you want to talk on the um, and the one or two items that you have for tonight. Can I ask Walt one more thing? Yes, what do you think about the parking for some of these events? That's what I was going to ask. I think a that's, little bit space there. Yeah, that's what I was trying to figure out. And um, I also wanted to see how that works with um, just in the lot or if there's possibility for on the, on the side of the street or how that would work. That's, uh, that's something we have to figure out. But in the mornings, I don't see it being an issue. As far as I've been here, it looks pretty good. Um, the evenings could be could be different, but well, in the mornings there's employee parking there and the emergency vehicles, so that's you don't see a problem parking problem. No, there's there's enough room at the end of the lot. There's enough. Okay. Yeah, it seems like there's more than enough spots to get. You know, if you had, uh, I don't know, 
10 to 15 families in there for the morning music class with the little kids. Okay. Thanks, Will. Mark? Yep. Okay. Uh, I'm going to talk about a, a major sewer dig that we just did. I had mentioned in my last, uh, I think two out of the three last public works reports that I send in weekly that I was uh, checking out that I knew there was a, an issue on Trevos Road near Lucan's Lane in one of our sewer mains. We've, we've had problems there for years. So the problems have become much more frequent in, in the last three or four months. And it always happens on a Friday or Saturday night, and it takes four to six hours to clear with four to six men controlling traffic and all. So I knew there was something wrong here. So we went down. We spent a few days. We went down. The main is 16 feet deep. So we wound up going down and pulling out a lot of large stones, pieces of broken terracotta pipe. And we were trying to hit it with the jet, uh, the jet truck, get through it. And it's like we were hitting a, a concrete wall. So I called K.E. Seifert, K.E. Seifert uh, contractors to uh, dig it up. I, we, we know there's a there's a big problem there. There's a break. This, this the sanitary sewer main is 16 feet deep. So they had to use all the big shoring and they had to do it safely. Here we found out directly over top our main, about four feet deep from, from the street level, is a 12 inch water main directly over top of our sewer pipe. Uh, West Bucks County Water and Sewer. So the, the dig wound up taking six and a half days, where it normally, in my opinion, would have taken three days, three and a half. We had to shore, use the shoring because it was so deep. If we had broken that pipe, we, we would have made this, the news all around the state. So they had to be, they had to secure the the actual 12 inch water main to the shoring and continue digging. And because the pipe, the, the water pipe was directly over our sewer pipe, we couldn't dig right there. They had to dig on the side. It was it was it was very nerve wracking. But anyway, I've been the the ballpark figure for this job is, is about eighty thousand dollars. I got a, a talk to Seifert today, their, their boss there, Victor, just so I could have some ballpark figure to present to you tonight. I'm in I'm in communication with Bucks County Water and Sewer now. I'm waiting for them to get back to me. I've talked to uh, one person, Rick, there twice. I'm going to see if, uh, since their, their main is directly over our sewer, and our sewer was there long before their main, I think, had to be, maybe they could help offset the cost of this job. But I want to commend KEC for, they did a great job. And I was there the whole time they were working. Uh, but I just wanted to share with you what's going on. It is fixed. And this has been a problem going on that sounds to me that it had been, it'd been a problem for about 15 years, but it became so frequent I couldn't, I couldn't ignore it. It was, mm -hmm. but anyway, we, we wound up pulling out a piece of concrete that was about 3,000 pounds that have, it was on top of the pipe. Mm -hmm. So I can actually send you pictures of it. It actually was a wall we were hitting. So, wow. did you, mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I just want to make you aware of that we didn't get the final bill yet, but the, the, okay. the job is done. We had to have Flagger, Flagger Force was out there, whichever company it was. Because we almost we there's a good chance we had to close Trevos Road down and then detour the traffic, so we were able to get around that. But we had to have three flagger crews out there to do it. But uh, it was very costly, and I actually thought it was going to cost more than that. So they gave us a 15% discount on the labor because uh, we seem to be a good customer. But I'm I'm very pleased with uh, the KC for its uh, professionalism and how they responded and did the job. So, Joe, that, did you want to add anything to that? No, I think you, you hit you hit it on the head. I mean, uh, the only thing we can do is try to, you know, inquire and have dialogue further with uh, Bucks County Sewer and Water, and see if they, you know, would insist on the cost. Because, go, I'm not an expert in this, but in talking to Mark, it seems that the, the the job was that much more costlier and that much more longer day wise, solely because of their pipe existing above our pipe. Um, yeah, it's unfortunate, but we're going to try to recoup some of that. Uh, hopefully they're willing. I, I think it's only fair, but we're going to attempt it. Does that, does that, uh, amount include the, uh, the, the cruise, the flagger cruise also? Yes. Okay. Yes. I, I couldn't ignore it. That was in bad shape though. Um, 
Yeah, it, 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 and in talking the mark, it seems like it was a yearly basis. At least it ha it happened at least once a year. But in this given year, you had it basically three or four times. It's better to deal with the issue. We weren't expected to be that far deep and that far as far the length of days. Um, you know, it's unfortunate, but at least we got something done that was probably a 15 year problem. Hey, Mark, I got a question for you. This piece of concrete that you had said that was what, a thousand pounds. What was that actually part of the, the sewer main that broke or was that another piece what of matter? That I don't know if it, what it was, was it was concrete that was poured around a lateral from the house right on the corner of Lucan's Avenue and Chivos Road. And if that had been installed in probably the 1960s. And here, I this is this is news to me. I'd never seen this before. Uh, they put, it's a, the, our main line was an eight inch terracotta. The lateral was a six inch terracotta that went all the way down. They put, I don't know if you know, uh, you ever see when they pour uh, footings, they have a tubular, a, a hollow tube that they pour the concrete in. Yeah, they, they call them sonotubes. Yep, sonic tube, exactly. Right. Well, they did that, and they it's a five foot length, a five foot long sonic tube with concrete around it. So they pulled that out, and so that was sitting for years. That was sitting on top of the terracotta main. So it, years of vibration or whatever, it eventually worked its way down. So just in the last few months, it went down all the way, and it was totally blocking the pipe. Yeah. Well, we were left yeah. with choice. And not not to mention that terracotta doesn't last forever either. So, and that that concrete had to weigh at least two tons, at least two tons. So I have pictures of it. I have yeah, pictures I, of it. I, I believe you. Thank you, Mark. And just kind of to go over some of the other challenges Mark kind of is having. Um, and, and this is you know we're not going to get into really personnel personnel because right, this, this is not an executive session. Mark basically w would have lost about three individuals uh, to uh, basically to the, to an authority, um, and then under an authority, you know, uh, they could kind of charge rates and and pay their employees at a much higher rate than what a township per se could do. Um, I kind of was contacted off the record by you know uh, two municipal authorities and some of the questions or rumor mills that's going on. Is the township going to be selling the, the the sewer system here? Is the township going to be selling the stormwater system here? Um, and to, my response was not to my knowledge, and I'm not aware of anything uh, behind the scenes. But right now, as an authority, you know, it, it's much easier to put out rates and, and, and pay your employees much higher. The township, we're at a disadvantage. You know, we're not an authority. We do have a sewer system. We do have a stormwater system, um, and we try to pay our employees at a fair rate. Uh, but it's hard to be uh, in the same game with an authority when an authority can pay their employees at a much higher rate than we, we can. Um, the other additional thing is that you know around the pipeline, you know the rumor mill is that if you're selling your stormwater, these various entities, whether it be you know, um, you know, Bucks County Sewer or Upper South Municipal Authority or whatever. Uh, these authorities basically are then going to come back and then charge the residents a monthly fee for the stormwater. We currently are not doing that. And we've been holding the line with our sewer rates. We've been holding the line with the stormwater and trying to keep this at a local level where uh, local you know, officials like yourself have control over this and control over the rates to take care of the residents. Um, you know, I hope the paradigm would not be changing the other way because then we would lose lose that control to assist the residents in keeping rates, uh, I guess, kind of suppressed for for lack of better words. Um, I don't know if that's the model the township would want to go to at a future date, but I'll, you know, from my perspective, us keeping it local. And manage it, managing it locally, we have kept costs on the stormwater side from the, from, for, uh, from the residents, you know, getting hit with those monthly fees, as well as the sewer side. So we've had increases in on the sewer side, but they're they're not drastic in nature at all, and they're very on a rare occasion. So we've been managing that area and very well um, to the best uh, of our ability. So uh, I just wanted to put that out there to the board as far as the sewer and the stormwater 
and then Mark losing personnel due to that aspect. If there's no, if there's no comments, we'll move on to another director. I just wanted to ask, uh, Mark, I don't know if you're the right one to ask or if it's Mike Italia, but the HVAC um, bidding process for the old district court and then the replacement of that, is there, I don't know, is there an expectation when you would like to have that finished by? Right. Uh, well, CKS ha is bidding it out now. We have the bids. We also have to put a, new, a, a generator in there, an emergency generator. But uh, I don't see why we can't have it done within a few months. Okay. So possibly uh, July? I, I would I would think Ray on that part, Mark, what we'll try to do is I actually have to talk to CKS on Tuesday um, about the bidding process. So I'll have a discussion with them and to see if that's ready to go out and then we could take it from there. But, maybe, you know, maybe by July-ish, maybe okay. you could have an award and a vendor on board. Sounds um, good. We're right. I'm just looking for a time frame. So, okay, that's good. Thanks. Yes, sir. Can I say what the, the system in there right now, we have two heat pumps. It's still, the one of them is it's on its last leg. So it's still it's still working somewhat, but it need, it's in desperate need of replacement. But it's it's on its last leg now. It is still working at the moment. So hopefully it doesn't get to the point where it stops. Okay. Good idea. Thank We're you, trying. Mark. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, Chief, are you, are you on the... You on the line? Yeah, hi. How are you? How are you, sir? Go ahead. Good. I'll let you talk. Uh, a couple things. Um, if you guys remember back in the beginning of December, in my weekly report, I'd ask you about um, that specialized SWAT school, a couple guys I wanted to send them to in New Hampshire. You guys remember that? I, I, yeah. had a, I know I had a conversation with the chief about certain schooling aspects. Yes. Okay. Well, long story short, um, we had a little communication staff with the guys. Uh, one of them signed up for school through regular channels. Three of them signed up for themselves and are asking for reimbursement for the school. I think it's in October. But we're just trying to get everything set up right now. So Joe wanted me to run it past you again. Um, it's seven hundred dollars per officer. And then we tried to find them an Airbnb up in this, this town in New Hampshire. There's nothing up there. Um, there's a Hampton Inn. And for four of them in two rooms for five nights, it's about $1,000. The, the government rates is about, about right. So, Joe, we're swimming around and pass you guys one more time if anybody had any objections or any questions. And is this for guys that are on the uh, South Central team? Yes. Yeah, okay. this is the advanced school. Uh, they found out about, they hadn't been to any advanced schools at all uh, just between COVID and, you know, everything else going on. They found this one. Um, they're starting to do live training again. We haven't had that for, you know, for the past 15 months. Um, like I said, it's the same school I, I discussed with you earlier in December. What kind of courses does it have, Chief? Uh, it's a state-of-the-art training facility in New Hampshire. Um, Six Hour, if you ever heard of them. Uh, big mm -hmm. company. And five days advanced SWAT tactics, firearms, uh, et cetera, et cetera, at a state of the art facility. Okay, thanks. And I'm not sending all of them. We're sending two thirds of them. The other two, uh, I'm not sending them this year. And Ted, this is something obviously that you're, you know, you're in support of, right? You feel that the cops, you know, get a lot out of this. I, I wish the old chiefs had sent me to it. You know, right. uh, <laughs> I'm a little jealous of these guys, tell the truth. But uh, yeah, it's good training. <laughs> All right. Deb, you're muted, Deb. You're muted. How many officers, Ted? Four of the six officers that are assigned to the team. Four. So when they're off the street for the amount of time it takes to be at this training, how's that going to work out with your scheduling? It'll be fine. One of them is uh, the school resource officer. One of them is a detective, and uh, the other two guys patrol. We should be all right. That's okay. So we're not talking about any overtime for officers or anything there like that. There might be one or two days of coverage, but uh, nothing crazy. Um, so that, it's, we send guys to a week long school all the time, 
that's a common thing to happen in the, in the department. It's just it's unusual to set them so far away. But um, I, other I, than secondary like school. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sure. So is that the is that there's nothing and it just I'm just it's just a question. So is this something that they normally don't take being on the, the SWAT team and the only the because it's state of the art, that's why they they wanted you want to send them to New Hampshire, right? Yeah, exactly. And okay. the, the things that they're gonna learn, they're gonna bring back to the department. Um, two of those four guys are, are firearms instructors. So they're teaching the whole department stuff, you know, every year, you know, three, four times a year. So it's uh, whatever they learn, they bring back to us. Do we have an armor? I'm just curious. We have a couple. Okay. That's all I have. Okay. Do, do, do we need to approve this training, Joe, or anything? Or this is just kind of like... No, just, just kind or... of the, to be aware, that since they're going out of state, just, uh, um, just to okay. be aware that we would be picking up costs uh, associated with it, with it, meaning their lodging and so, so to speak, and any type of travel, travel costs. Gas, food, lodging, the whole... Yeah, well, the food's covered by contract. They get whatever they get, two meals a day, whether it's school right. or town. Right. I'm I'm good with it, Ted. All right, thank you. Yeah, it's good, good training. Yeah, supportive. Just wanted to know the ins and outs of the costs. Sounds good, Ted. Okay, so there's good news. Okay. Uh, we're having a hard time finding a van because of the uh, manufacturing crisis in, the, in this country. And we found one this week, and it's three thousand dollars cheaper than one we were trying to get. So uh, we saved three grand this week on something else. So it, it balances itself out. Yeah, and that's in the manager's report at the end. We'll we'll talk about that. And it's all part. It's a coast another co-star vendor, and it's part of the RDA package. Ted, do we have one we're going to be getting rid of? I am not sure yet. We have uh, one vehicle that's got a blown engine, it's a bit of Fred Beans for warranty. We have another that got struck by a motorcycle. Um, we're still going back and forth with the insurance company on that. Um, I think we're fixing the one that got struck, but it's an older vehicle. That one's probably going to go. Um, and we have, uh, if you see it, that white Ford Fusion we have, it's about 15 years old. I'd like to get rid of that this year if we can uh, figure out some car rotations to get rid of it. Right. Very good. Chief, are you okay then with that? Um, with the ordinance, I guess uh, that being advertised on Eastview, um, is there any type of study that you need to do before beforehand on that particular one? Okay, I just I just wanted to make sure before before we put that back on the on an agenda. Oh, uh, real quick, the guy that was complaining on West Myrtle Avenue. Um, we did the study. The data has been downloaded. I just don't have it in hand yet. Sergeant Brandon took some time off this week. Uh, when he gets back, he's going to uh, produce a report for me. I can get back to you about what we're doing over there. And then as far as the Trimble, we're going to wait on Mike to give me the, the last of the numbers, and then we can put that before the board uh, to get that rolling for you, too. Okay, cool. Thank you. All right. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Um, right. Next up would be Ryan. Ryan? Yes. Um, our annual fire prevention day, um, as long as uh, no COVID restrictions, it will be um, October 9th from 12 to 4 at the Staples parking lot. We are also going to hold another uh, shredding event on October 2nd to Saturday from 9 to 12. It will be posted on uh, the Township's TV channel, the website, and we're also going to get some lawn signs to uh, put out so this way it's more advertised. Um, we're going to tie that. That'll be the week before fire prevention. So we'll tie it in like with fire prevention to have people, you know, clean the papers and stuff out of your out of your house. I'm also working on a Wills for Heroes event. It's a uh, free for first responders. They can get a free will done or if they have a will, they can get it looked at at no cost. Um, it won't be until the fall because they are still shut down with, with COVID. So what? time and what location was, will be announced uh, later on that. What was that again, Ryan? Uh, Wills for Heroes, it's called. Okay. It's so, a free. It's a free event for um, first responders to get a free will, 
or if they have a will, they can get it looked at by free attorneys. So you're having a turn. Do you, are you, do you know what attorneys are coming? Did you invite several or? Yeah, it's a whole group. Um, I can send you the website. It's a group that they have. So they send the, they pick out the ones that are local and they send them down. So I can send you the uh, website later on if you want. Okay. Yeah, I would like to see that. Thanks. Sure. So, so we're more, we're, we're more hosting it for the organization. Yeah, we'll just host yeah. it. Um, I'm going to talk to probably one of the firehouses um, and see if one of them want to host it there. And then they, the company creates a, uh, they have a website where the person can go on and um, you log on for a certain time, like a time frame. Um, I did it like three years ago at Trevo's Firehouse and it was a pretty good uh, turnout. So it's a free service? Yep, free, free service. No one gets charged anything. So they actually do they type them up and you have to tape them up right there in front of you and you get two uh you get two copies of them okay yeah, that's the right website out to uh tomorrow morning when i get into the office okay thanks that's a pretty um, nice service all. right thanks <laughs> and it, it and it's this co this company um that you're using you have experience with them right from the yeah, they, they, they go out all through bucks county montgomery county yep that's what I thought. Thank you. No problem. And they That's all I no have if no one has any questions. They charge no additional fees to the. Yep, editor. there's no fees at all. No. Okay. Oh, that's all I have. Ryan? Yeah, but that's all I have. Okay. Ryan, you, you'll you'll do a little legwork on that that one item we spoke about with regard to those receipts. The uh, with the two. Um, uh, yes, shopping. I'm actually, I called out to Acme the other day I'm just, after we talked, so I'm just waiting for him to give me a call back. Okay. Thank you, sir. No problem. All right. Uh, last but not least, Mr. Mike Italia. Mike? You always put me last. Nobody puts baby in the corner. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, I never uh, saw that movie. Somebody said that to me. I was like, what? <laughs> if you haven't seen Dirty Dancing, you should watch it. <laughs> Uh, still a full court press, um, enforcement wise from the township. Uh, we we're, we we're, we're touching pretty much anywhere from 10 to 15 properties a week, uh, with enforcement. Uh, it's, uh, we're, we're starting to get, see some light at the end of the tunnel. Hopefully, uh, we're getting into the larger projects. Um, you know, with that, that might take a couple months to get through, uh, Papa John's is going to be opening. Uh, we'll be having a ribbon cutting. It looks like, uh, Joe, would they say June 3rd? I believe that was the date. I have to double check on that one. I, so I'll be sending it out to the board. I, we first wanted to confirm to make sure the UNO was situated. Yeah, it's, we're wrapping that up too. I had a conversation with them tonight. So any of the paperwork will be taken care of before then. Uh, so Papa John's will be opening up. That's uh, near um, uh, Hand and Stone, Panera, that area. So they'll be ribbon cutting next week. Uh, I believe Burlington's opening this week or uh, Monday. Uh, they're 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 ready to go. Uh, we got you know a, a cheesesteak place coming in. Uh, so lots of food. Working on a bakery. You know Rome wasn't built in a day. You got to give me a little bit for that. <laughs> so apparently Joe likes donuts. So um, I heard it was bagels, I, but that's okay. <laughs> yep, I do both. <laughs> uh, yeah, but all good. We got uh, the food truck ordinance uh, to take care of Ed. Uh, you saw that rough draft came out. Any comments? Just feel free to email back. Um, that okay. we resurrected that from uh, 1958. Uh, so there's a uh, blue laws and uh, stuff that's uh, from the wayback machine uh, in in there. So. We uh, we navigated through that the last couple of weeks, but uh, we'll probably be updating a couple other ordinances as I run into them. Uh, specifically, the sign ordinance it's very outdated. Uh, we, we'd like to to clean that up, and it's a bit messy. So if anybody uh, has anything on their plate they want updated, now's a good time uh, to get that taken care of. I think the sign ordinance would be a nice one to look at. Yep. And Mike, when's the Burlington opening? I, I believe this week, if not this weekend, they're they're ready to go. Okay. And that was a large investment in the township, Mike. That was over a million dollars, right? <clears throat> that was a, a two million dollar project, yeah. Okay. And as you see, Burger King is well underway. That's uh, about one point five. Okay. 
What's the, what's the time frame on the uh, Burger King? Um, it, pretty quick. It, it looks like probably by September at the latest, I would think. Uh, they, they've been turning around those very quickly. Um, you know, Whopper Wednesday is pretty popular, so we got to get that back open. Okay. <laughs> I try to bring some comedy. Sorry. Oh my gosh. Hey, you're you're killing us tonight, Mike. <laughs> I'm snorting. You're making me snort. Right. Oh, and uh, we had Stonemore at the cemetery uh, in front of Zodi Henry Board last night, and that uh, that passed. So you'll be seeing that uh, once they get all their permits from the county and whatnot. Um, uh, you'll you'll probably you might see it. They need, might need a few waivers, but uh, we'll see what happens once they get their final plan together. Appreciate your engineer's report, Mike. And that's John. He's uh, he's tied up today, but yeah, John's John's been cranking out those reports, and uh, and I can tell you, infrastructure wise, um, you know, we looked at a whole thing on Veet Road. Uh, that that all kind of goes into that cemetery area and flows down. Uh, so we're trying to fix a lot of the infrastructure throughout the township as well. That's been, uh, um, you know, not not really touched for some time. And Mark and his gang have been a, a big help with that as well. Hmm. Okay, thanks. Uh, Mike, do you have any other thing for the, the Petrucci's thing? I, I don't know if they've done anything more. Are they going to do anything more? After we went to look at their facility in Warminster, uh, they put a pretty nice, and they were so, they were going to come back with something yep. different. Thanks for, thanks, thanks, for, thanks for reminding us, Ed, on that. Um, actually, we just received something from Frank, I believe it, was it Thursday? No, I'm sorry. It was uh, just uh, Tuesday or Monday? Uh, well, Matt. Yeah. So I believe it was Monday. Yeah, and I believe they're shooting for the 26th, I believe, for the second meeting in June. Okay. Yeah, they, they promised they'd come up with something and I haven't seen anything since. So just curious about it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Thank You're you. On. Is there any other questions? We got about three minutes before we have to jump to the next meeting. I'm good. Okay. All right. I guess we could log off and, uh, and then uh, hop to the next meeting. All right. Sounds good, Joe. Thank you. Thank you.